الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالهدى والدين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وقال سيدنا مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم ان اصدق حديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان الشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلال اسم في النار اما بعد فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى ولنبلونكم بشيء من الجوع والخوف والنقص من الاموال والانفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين اذا اصابتهم مصيبه قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون اولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم الرحمه واولئك هم المهتدون our praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah for his guidance and for his mercy and we ask him for deliverance from fear deliverance from fear is an important part of Islam deliverance from fear الذي اطعمهم من جوع وامنهم من خوف Allah is the one who had uh, fed them or, or saved them from hunger and saved them from fear so the Quran was, re- was revealed about fear. Many verses in Quran has been about fear. Fear is real. Fear is something that people experience. It's an emotion. I want to talk a little bit about the emotions that a segment in the Muslim community are experiencing because of the Trump victory, of the Trump election. He's was elected as president of the United States. He's president of president elect. Now, in the last 24, it, well, since the election, I have seen and heard personally many, many Muslims, well, people in the country in general who are afraid. They're demonstrating. They're crying. They're talking about leaving the country. People are talking about committing suicide. They have set up in Sacramento. They have set up counseling for children. Counseling for children. I've seen other Muslims say, you know, my, ch- uh, my children are distraught. I'm not going to send them to school. They're having emotional problems. Now, this is real. So we want to put it in the perspective of Islam because faith out trumps politics every time. We are a faithful people before we are a political people. As Muslims, do we, are we involved in politics? Absolutely. As citizens, are we involved in politics? Absolutely. But we're believers before we're political activists. So in Islam, you have to be very clear that you don't cross over the two too much. If you cross over the two, mixing politics with Islam, that's inevitable because there is a political component of Islam that deals with politics, that deals with rule, that deals with governance. There's so many verses about hukm. And the hukm illallah, judgment is to Allah. So of course there's that political component. However, when you mix politics with Islam, with religion, with faith, there are some rules. And I'm going to talk about that rule. Okay? The rule is, the cardinal rule is that your faith leads your politics, not your politics lead your faith. So in the case we have this election where Donald Trump is elected president, well, a lot of us may have a tendency to let the politics lead our faith. Meaning that, oh, I'm afraid. I don't know what's going to happen. What, you know, oh, we don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. But we're speculative based on statements that he made. He said this, he said this, he that, he said that. He's the president, now I'm afraid. Now, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, alayhi salatu how do they situate in that? 
Because that's how, what we are supposed to do. We're a people of faith. So we're going to take our faith and we're going to transpose our faith onto the political arena as opposed to letting the politics transpose itself onto our faith. So we are, we're afraid. And we're ready to kill ourselves. We're ready to demonstrate. We're ready to leave the country. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, we will test you with something of hunger and fear, loss of money, loss of life, loss of crops. Now, he, he mentioned five things here. These are the five major areas of uh, human um, not value, but uh, they're thriving. Five Eric major areas where you thrive. You're hungry, you don't got no money, you get killed, you're afraid. Okay, so let's take off the table, in this case, Jura, because none of us are hungry. We're not starving. That's not what Muslims are being tested with. We're not hungry. We're not starving here. You're starving in other places, but in the United States of America, the Muslims, we're not starving. Okay, loss of money, nothing. Tragic has happened that we lose most of us who are working was working before the election you're still working You didn't lose your job And it's very unlikely that you're not going to get hired any place because you're Muslim that hasn't happened in Years and years and years or the incidence is so low. It's negligible as a percentage Loss of life Anybody can lose their life at any time, in any kind of way. Crime, it could be hate crime. Hate crimes in America uh, against, uh, against uh, Muslims, yeah, it has happened, but if you factor in to the number of Muslims living in the United States of America, the percentage is less than 1%. It's like a, it's less than a tenth of a percent. If you factor in all the, for most Muslims, something happens in North Carolina, something happens in Sacramento, it doesn't mean the whole country all of a sudden is against Muslims. The average Muslim goes to work, goes to school, every day, nothing happens. Business is still running, nothing happens. Okay, so it's the fear that's getting this bogged down. And so fear is manufactured in a way, sometimes by events, sometimes by events that you think may happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the fear, he factors in the fear. As one of the tests. He says, okay, Muslims, I'm testing you with fear. So give glad tidings to the Sabirin, to those who are patient. Hey, you have fear. What is Allah saying? Be patient. Because this is the test. I'm testing you. It's not Donald Trump testing us. That's the political way of looking at it. Donald Trump is this? No. The, Islamic way of looking at it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. Allah will test you through whatever means he wants to. That is Allah. That is what he does. He tests people. It's empty hand. One of the functions of the Rabb is that human beings, Muslims, believers, are tested. Allah says, do people think that they'll be allowed to say they believe without being tested? Allah says, we have tested those people that came before them. Allah says, and we shall know for sure, I mean, after the testing, Allah says, he's going to know for sure who are really sincere in their faith and who are lying in their faith. Who are planning around. So Allah is saying, if you believe in Allah, if you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you believe in his word in the book, in Allah Allah will defend those who believe. If you believe that, well now, like this election is one of the situations where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people to see whether or not your belief is true or false. So we can either start crying and hollering and so on and this and that, you know, 
This is Juma'a, so this is not all about politics. We have to put it in the context of faith. But the fear, see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test anyone who put fear in their heart above him. See, that's the personal issue with Allah. Like Allah says, جَعَلُوا فِتْنَةً نَاسِ كَعَذَابِ اللَّهِ they make fitting of the people like it's a punishment of Allah. And Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا مِنْ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا مِنْ Those people who believe they love Allah the most. Allah says, وَلَا تُخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي He says, don't fear them, fear me. So it becomes a test. Now, is it easy? No, sometimes tests are hard. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard. That's life. We're grown men and women in this land. So you don't want to transpose that fear onto your kids. You want to teach, you don't want to teach your kids to, well, I do this. No, 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 no. You want to teach your kids to be proud of who they are as Muslims, not to hide their faith. Be proud of their faith, practice their faith, Put the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm telling you, a much of the fear is unfounded. It's just fear. Fear in many cases is unfounded fear. Allah says, We talked about taqwa. Whoever has taqwa of Allah, he makes a makhraj for him. You have to teach that to your children. The last thing we want to do is we, we don't want to. I was at a forum uh, a couple of days ago, and it came up. It was a Muslim forum, forum it was an NSA forum. And they do good work in show sometimes. But they were just talking about how, hey, all of us are afraid. We're afraid. And we don't know what to do. And it's, you know, it's crazy. And I had to speak about it. So I had to just kind of direct, redirect the audience. No, all Muslims aren't afraid. You know, they're not, everybody's not living in fear. We're not supposed to live in fear because someone has been elected president of the United States of America. That is insane. But that is where much of the country is. And so as Muslims, we do not believe that our politics, that politics should dictate our faith. Our faith should dictate how we respond to politics. So if we're going to use our faith, because we're Muslims, that's the whole idea. We have kitab, we have a book, we have a source of guidance that we follow. We have a prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, who we follow. We have a Lord that we trust in, we believe in, we fear him. We believe that Allah has all the power. So we believe that Allah's power is more than the power of the President of the United States of America. So the best way to deal with this frenzy is to use your faith. Use your scripture. Know that fear is a test from Allah. But Allah says, well, best shit is But give glad tidings to those who are patient with the test. If they take it as a musiba, as a disaster, what do we say? Inna lillahi. Verily, we are from Allah. And verily, we shall return to Allah. Allah says, when you do that, ulaika alayhim salawatu merabbihim. On those people, on such people, are salawatum, comfort, barakah from their Lord, and rahmah, and mercy. And then he says, and those people who when they are tested with fear, they say, hey, we're from Allah, we're going to return to Allah, and we're going to be patient with this fear. Allah says, upon them are salawatum rabbihim, are good mention from their Lord and mercy, and Allah says, they are the rightly guided. And the Prophet ﷺ was not a stranger to fear. When him and Abu Bakr was in the cave, death, death was imminent because the Quraysh was right there. They were right outside the cave. And what did he say to Abu Bakr al-Sadiq? La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. 
Don't worry, Allah is with us. Allah is with us. And what did Allah do? Anzal alayhim as sakina. See, this is how you have your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not a Lord. He's sitting somewhere on the side in some faraway galaxy and just left the you know, the creation to go on about their business and deal. No, Allah is a Lord, is that He conducts the affair of the world from the heaven and earth. He's like still doing it. That's the whole thing. It's not like Allah got like us, oh, okay, I'm gonna go over here. No, Allah does not do that. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْبَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Allah doesn't miss anything. He knows that Donald Trump was elected president of the United States of America. He knows that there's Muslims in this country that Donald Trump has talked about and said he may do this, he may do that. He knows that thing. But this is not Donald Trump's country. This is not our country. It's not my country. This country and all of the Aradi on the planet belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he does what he wants. So my, my message is, to, is for us not to be afraid. Resist the fear. Have patience. If you're running to ignorance, follow the kitab. Allah says, Rijal al-Rahmani al-ladhina yamshuna fil ardi hawnan wa khatabahum jahiluna qalu salama. He says, the men of the mercy, the men of the merciful, one, who walk lightly on the earth and when they are addressed by ignorant people, they say, Salam. Take that approach. You're going to make more friends than enemies. We had it with stuff for a while. Those are you, Chris. I'm not going to finish.